Within the confines of Naruto, there are dozens of ways to be powerful. You can be a talented Taijutsu user, a talented Genjutsu user, a talented Ninjutsu user. But of all of those abilities and all of the ways to be powerful, one is truly the most interesting and the most fixated upon by us as a fan base. And of course, that power system would be none other than Dojutsu. You see, Dojutsu, also known as Ocular Jutsus, play a massive role in the Naruto universe. The Uchiha are born with the Sharingan, the Hyuga are born with the Byakugan, and all of this descended from the Otsutsuki. And from the Otsutsuki, we gained three major Dojutsus, also known as the Three Great Dojutsu, and those are the Sharingan, the Rinnegan, and the Byakugan. However, there's a lot more Dojutsu than just the Three Great Dojutsu, and that's what today video is about. Well, it's also about the three great dojutsu. It's just about all dojutsu and all of Naruto. Specifically, explaining every single one of them and ranking them in terms of power. But before we get to ranking or explaining anything, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And while you guys are clicking and typing, go ahead and type in NC Gamer 23 which is my other YouTube page where instead of talking anime, I play video games, or Hammer's Collection, where instead of sitting while I talk about anime, I talk about anime while building giant statues. So, the Dojutsu. One of the strongest weapons in the entirety of Naruto as a whole. Entire wars being waged in order to control them. Entire clan lines wiped out to eradicate them. But why are Dojutsu so powerful? Where do they come from? How do they work? And which is the strongest? Well, we're going to answer all of those questions and more. But first, let's start these videos as we usually do at the beginning. Before we get to talking about all of the dojutsu, I want to talk about where dojutsu as a whole got their inspiration from. You see, it wasn't Kishimoto who thought of powerful eyes that have mystical abilities. That came from literature long before Kishimoto. Kishimoto is a bit of a history buff and incredibly well read, which is why he was inspired by two previous works in order to create the dojutsu in the Naruto universe. The first bit of literature that inspired Kishimoto to make the dojutsu was the Kuga Ninja Scrolls. This was a novel written in 1959 about two warring ninja clans. Sound like a familiar concept? But these two warring ninja clans, in order to get stronger than each other, use selective breeding within their clans. And by only breeding selectively, these two ninja clans became stronger by gaining mutations, with the heirs of each clan holding mysterious dojutsu abilities. Kishimoto was also inspired by the journey to the West. In this story, after Monkey God King, Sun Wukong eats all the pills of immortality and all the fruit of immortality and basically anything that exists ends your life ever, he's captured by heaven because they wanted all that immortality stuff. And once they capture Sun Wukong, they seal him inside of Lu Zhu's eight trigram furnace. Essentially, this is a big old god-sized furnace that was supposed to burn Sun Wukong into ash so that the god, specifically Lu Zhu, could get his pills of longevity back from the ashes. But after being inside of the furnace for 49 days, Sun Wukong broke out. You see, in those 49 days, Sun Wukong had actually been refined by the fire of the furnace and not burnt by it. And with that refinement, his eyes gained a fiery glow. And essentially, with this new cosmetic look, he also got the ability to see evil in whatever form it presents itself in. That is to say, if somebody has evil intentions around him, but they're trying to masquerade like they don't, he can see through it immediately. So it's a red dojutsu. Now that we've talked about where Kishimoto got the inspiration for dojutsus, we should just talk about, well, dojutsus. Now there's technically 11 canon dojutsus, but there's also two non-canon dojutsus. And since longer videos tend to to do better on this page than shorter videos, I'm going to be covering these two non-canon dojutsus first. We're not going to really rank these two non-canon dojutsus against the canon dojutsus just because technically they're non-canon, so like why rank them against the canon things? But I am going to explain them because people like when I do that. So the first non-canon dojutsu that we have is Shion's dojutsu. This dojutsu doesn't have a name, it's just simply named after the person who has it, Shion. Shion was one of the main characters in Naruto Shippuden the movie, which was Naruto Shippuden's first movie. And arguably, it's most forgettable. Shion is a priestess in the land of demons, and she inherited an ability from her mother to see the future. But because Shion lives in the land of demons, and she's a priestess, her other ability is sealing away demons. And it's basically her entire life. She and her entire lineage of priestess have to seal away demons whenever they appear. But she's rather good at sealing away these demons because she's only almost guaranteed not to die while sealing them away. What do I mean by that? Well, her dojutsu works as a defensive mechanism. Essentially, her dojutsu gives her a connection to her future self. If her future self senses that she's about to die, she will send a message back to her past self to tell her who's around her in that future scenario. That's kind of confusing, so let me break it down a little bit better. Let's say in a week's time, I was going to go rob a bank with three of my closest friends. If I was about to be shot in the head during this bank robbery, I could make a connection to my 
my past self, who's a week younger than me, and tell him, hey, Brian's next to you. Tell Brian that he's gonna die in a week, so he's motivated to protect you during the bank heist. And this is essentially how Xion's powers worked for herself. She would get a message from her future self telling her who's around her when she's about to die in order to motivate them to protect her so that they die and she doesn't. But she can't control this power voluntarily. Meaning sometimes she'll just see somebody and see their death as it is connected to her. So in the scenario of me robbing this bank, if I just was to bump into Brian, I would be like, hey man, I saw you die in a bank heist a week from now. And according to Nart Spoon in the movie, she has made a hundred of these predictions and never once been wrong. Now, obviously the ability to see the future is powerful, but if you can't control when you get to see the future and the only future you get to see is the deaths of those around you, well, that's not a great power. Especially when you consider the fact that the only reason and that she gets to see the future so she can sacrifice those around her when she's about to die. Which means that if you're a person who people don't care about a lot, they're not gonna sacrifice themselves for you. Obviously, as a descendant of the priestess line of the land of demons, she was an important person in that area. So people would sacrifice themselves for her safety. But if I told Brian he was gonna die in this bank heist, and unless me and Brian are secret lovers, he's not gonna give up his life for me. Technically, if we were ranking these non-canon dojutsus with the canon dojutsus, that would still be the weakest. And technically, this next one would also be the second weakest, so maybe we are just ranking them. Because the next dojutsu that's non-canon is Yom's dojutsu. Yom, or Yome, is a ninja from the Hidden Sand. And she kind of has a dojutsu. Like, it's classified as a dojutsu, but like, is it really a dojutsu? Let me explain. Essentially, Yome, or Yom, is able to dilate her eyes to such a degree that her eyesight improves to a superhuman rate. Essentially, upon the dilation of her eyes, she can see the reflections in many water droplets in the air. And this essentially allows her to see several kilometers in one direction. The only problem is that this dojutsu starts to fall apart if there isn't a lot of water particles in the air, like if it's a very dry day. And because her pupils are so dilated, it also makes her very susceptible to things like flash bombs. So it's just like a really, really shitty Byakugan. Especially when you consider the fact that in close combat, she can use his pupil dilation dojutsu to enhance her combat ability. Because she can see reflections in the water droplets around her, she can basically see behind herself, giving her pseudo no blind spot. Until you flashback. Flash but speaking of the Byakugan, our next entry on the list is a non-canon version of the Byakugan. Yeah, that's right. There's actually three. I forgot about one of them. What dojutsu are we talking about? Well, we're talking about Renmaru's Keke Genkai. This is a Keke Genkai or a dojutsu specific to Renmaru. Renmaru is a young orphan from the Hidden Mist. Renmaru is a bit like Haku. Actually, Renmaru basically has the exact same character arc as Haku. Renmaru was a young orphan in the Hidden Mist who was essentially being raised by all of the farmers in the area. Then one day he accidentally exposed that he had a Keke Genkai in the form of his dojutsu and the farmers basically kicked him out. It was at this point that Renmaru, too young and too weak, defeat him himself basically began to die on the side of a street in the Hidden Mist. And this is where Raiga, a member of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist, the wielder of the Kiba Blades, found him. Now, Raiga was going to kill Renmaru until Renmaru exposed the fact that he had a dojutsu. And it was at that point that Raiga decided that Renmaru would be useful to him and started to use his visual prowess to up his own power. But what did Renmaru's dojutsu do? Well, that's a great question. Basically everything the Byakugan does, but let me get into it. Renmaru's dojutsu gave him extrasensory perception, meaning that he could see great distances, even through objects. But what he had that the Byakugan doesn't is that after seeing that great distance, let's say two kilometers away, he could hear what's going on at that location. And just like the Byakugan, he can see chakra within a body, but he can actually see a lot more than just chakra. He can also see physical life force within a body. And because he could see a human's life force, he could see whether they were dead or alive. But he can see more than just chakra and life force. He can also see into your innermost thoughts and therefore exactly predict what series of attacks you're about to pull off, essentially giving him the ability to read your mind. And if that's not a... Ow! Like I was saying, and if that's not enough, he can also put people under a very powerful genjutsu. A genjutsu so powerful that even if you know you're being placed under it, you can't resist it. But let's say he's competing against somebody with a Byakugan. He can create red dust that hinders their ability to see chakra and also weakens their resistance to genjutsu. Oh! 
And technically, he has the one's own life jutsu. You know, the jutsu that Granny Chio created where she can transfer her life force into a puppet in order to make that puppet live. And therefore, she used this jutsu to bring Gara back to life. Yeah, Renmaru can do that just without giving up his own life. Let's say I got stabbed a bunch of times and I was about to die. Renmaru can transfer his life force into me in order to bring me back to full life. It's like medical ninjutsu without any of the hassle. As to whether or not that ability is tied to his dojutsu, we don't really know. So if this dojutsu was canon, I would say it's stronger than the Byakugan, but it's not canon, so we're not talking about it. But since we are talking about the Byakugan, let's get to the Byakugan. Because yes, it is the weakest canon dojutsu in the entirety of the show. I know, hot start to the list, but unfortunately it's true. We gotta use something to knock down the Hugas. They're always talking about how they're the strongest class in Konoha. Which, like, considering the fact that they haven't been massively eradicated is probably true. Now, I've done an entire video on the Byakugan that you can see right here, but let's quickly talk about its history and its abilities. The Byakugan is only found in two clans, the Otsutsuki and the Hyuga. And unlike a lot of the other dojutsus on this list, this dojutsu doesn't have to be activated by a certain set of emotions or events. Any clan member of pure enough blood of the Hyugas or the Otsutsuki is going to be born with a Byakugan. Now, obviously, this is an exception in people who who aren't full-blooded Hyugas or Otsutsukis. Like Himawari, who can activate her Byakugan, but usually she has light blue eyes. Or Mukai Kohinata from Itachi's light novel, whose family split from the Hyugas generations ago, and therefore he only has one Byakugan. Now this is obviously the base eye for an Otsutsuki. And because Hamura, Hagoromo's brother, never awoke to a Sharingan, his descendants, i.e. the Hyugas, and also the clan on the moon that Toneri descended from, had the Byakugan. Now onto the abilities of the Byakugan. Well, it's a lot like Ranmaru's Dojutsu. Essentially, the uses of the Byakugan have a near 360 field of vision, meaning that they can see in all directions in a bubble around them. The only exception to this being the blind spot above their first thoracic vertebrae. And on top of being able to see in a perfect 360 bubble all around them, they can also see through all objects, meaning they can see through trees, look underground, look through a human being, or look into a human being. And with training, the range at which you can see can be increased. In part one, Neji is able to see 50 meters around him, but by the time the war arc comes around, he can see 800 meters in all directions. But should a user of the Byakugan decide to focus on one point, they can actually see dozens of kilometers away. Outside of being used for things like recon, the Byakugan can also be used to see all 361 Tenketsu spots in a person's body. These are essentially little spots of chakra that can be attacked using the Hyuga clan ability, Gentle Fist. And by injecting chakra into these 300 161 Tenketsu spots, you can either shut down or increase the chakra flow through that point, which could either increase somebody's chakra ability or completely shut it down. Certain users of the Byakugan, most notably Mukai Kohinata, are so good with Gentle Fist, they're actually able to cut ninjutsu shot at them in half using it so that it passes around them. And since the Byakugan is technically the best at seeing chakra out of all of the dojutsu, a user of the Byakugan can see if somebody's under genjutsu and even distinguish shadow clones from the original. And that's basically it. Unfortunately for the Byakugan, basically all of its abilities are also abilities of other dojutsus. The Sharingan can basically do everything the Byakugan can do, just a little bit worse, and the only way to level up a Byakugan is to be an Otsutsuki. So for your average person, yes, it's the weakest dojutsu. Now I might get a little flack for this, because yes, I am saying the Byakugan is technically weaker than the Ketsurigan. You see, the Ketsurigan's history is a bit lesser known than the Byakugan's. Ketsurigan was originally shown off in Sasuke's Shinden, Sasuke's light novel. Well, one of Sasuke's light novels. This is a dojutsu that only ever appears in the Chinoiki clan. See, the Chinoiki clan is a very old clan, actually being present during the Warring States period, and they were a very powerful mercenary clan present in the Land of Lightning. However, unfortunately, after the conclusion of the Warring States period, one of the members of the Chinoiki clan married the Land of Lightning's daimyo. And when the Land of Lightning daimyo died, everyone blamed it on the Chinoke wife. Now believing that the entirety of the Chinoke clan was evil, they were banished to the Valley of Hell. And they were banished there by the Uchiha, who were hired to send them there. And in this valley of hell, because it was incredibly hot and all of the water there was so iron rich, they were thought to have died out. However, the Chinoiki clan not only figured out how to use this water to keep themselves alive, but they also learned how to control it. Given the Chinoiki clan the ability to control liquids with high iron content with their dojutsu. Meaning obviously like things like the iron rich water in the valley of hell they could control, but more importantly, they could control blood. Because blood is incredibly iron rich. Meaning that the 
Katsuri Gone essentially gives you the ability to bloodbend. So that is to say, if you're in combat with a member of the Chinoiki clan and you're bleeding, they can literally suck your blood out of the cut. They can then turn that blood into a weapon like the MC of Beyond the Boundary, or simply just suck all of your blood out of you. They can also control and weaponize their own blood, giving them a pseudo version of magnet release if instead of like sand or iron or gold, you just used blood, which they can harden using the iron in it. So it's basically iron sand defense. But outside of the ability to control liquids that are high in iron content, the Katsuri Gun also gives users genjutsu abilities. Essentially, just like the Sharingan, should you make eye contact with somebody with a Katsurigan that's activated, you will enter into a genjutsu. However, unlike the Sharingan, if somebody using the Katsurigan simply touches you, they can also put you in genjutsu. The Sharingan, obviously, you need to make eye contact. Unless you're talking about Kodoro Matsukame, in which case you don't, but that's an exception. So with this dojutsu, you are essentially conferred an ability to blood bend and put people under genjutsu simply by making contact with them or eye contact with them. And while unlike the Byakugan or the Sharingan, the Katsuri Gan conveys no ability to track chakra, you don't really need it when you can control blood and put people in Genjutsu. But since we're talking about the Sharingan, it's next on the list. Do I really need to talk about the abilities or the history of the Sharingan? No, but I'm gonna do it anyways. The Sharingan, like the other three great dojutsu, came from the Otsutsuki. Well, sort of. You see, the Otsutsuki don't have Sharingan. I know what you're saying. You're saying, Nick, Hagoromo had a Sharingan before he had Rinnegan. That's filler. Everything we see about Hagoromo Hagoromo and Hamura's life during the war arc is all filler. Hell, half the shit we saw about Indra and Ashura was also filler. But since we're talking about Indra, he is technically the person who first manifested a Sharingan in the manga. And yes, technically he's in Otsutsuki, but let's be real, he doesn't have pale white skin. He's basically a human. He's not an Otsutsuki. Otsutsuki is like true-blooded Otsutsukis actually have Rini Sharingan. That's the eye they get in their forehead when they eat enough chakra fruit or absorb another Otsutsuki. Now, because Indra Otsutsuki was technically the first person to manifest a Sharingan, Gone, a lot of the Sharingan's history actually sort of got jumbled up. You see, Indra started the Curse of Hatred against his brother Ashura because Hagoromo chose Ashura to continue his will. This made Indra hate Ashura and therefore they started a decades-long war against each other. And this started the Curse of Hatred, which essentially led to the Uchiha and the Senju battling for 2,000 years. Because of the Curse of Hatred, it was largely believed for 2,000 or so years that one had to undergo a lot of traumatic emotions in order to awaken their Sharingan. However, that's actually not the situation. We learned in Boruto, specifically from Sarada, that one simply has to experience a large amount of emotions around somebody they love in order to activate the Sharingan. Essentially, if an Uchiha member experiences a large amount of emotion towards somebody they love, be it good or bad, their brain will release a special kind of chakra that goes to their optical nerves. And this special kind of chakra is what actually activates the Sharingan. However, the activation of a Sharingan can throw off the user of said Sharingan, because the extrasensory perception gives by the Sharingan is kind of a shock to the system. Therefore, when users of the Sharingan activate their Sharingan for the first time, their timing seems to be off and they're kind of useless in battle. And when a Sharingan is activated for the first ever time, it only has a singular Tomei. Well, actually, there's an exception to the rule. When Hagoromo awakens his Sharingan, he has all three Tomei instantly. But once again, filler. You see, the Sharingan is the first entry on this list that has different tiers. However, there's a common misconception around a Sharingan's Tomei. See, people largely believe that with extra Tomei, the Sharingan acquires extra abilities. However, this isn't the case. From the second that you activate a Sharingan, you have all of the abilities that you will ever get with a Sharingan. The Tomei just denote your proficiency with said techniques. Think of it a bit like getting on a mountain bike for the first time. Now that you've gotten on this mountain bike, you could technically do whatever you want on this mountain bike. You could go bomb down a mountain, you could do backflips off jumps, but for the moment, it's your first time on said mountain bike. So you're probably gonna bike it up and down the street for a while. And as you become better with said mountain bike, you will unlock more Tomei. But we keep talking about the abilities of the Sharingan, but we haven't actually talked about the abilities of the Sharingan yet. So what can the Sharingan do? Well, unfortunately for me, that is a very broad question. You see, a Sharingan essentially breaks down into two categories. The Eye of Insight and the Eye of Hypnotism. Nuchihas, when they awaken their Sharingans, can either get two Eyes of Insight, two Eyes of Hypnotism, or an Eye of Hypnotism and an Eye of Insight. Madara himself said it's technically best for an Uchiha to have an Eye of Insight and an Eye of Hypnotism. To give some examples of Uchihas here and what eyes they had, Itachi had an Eye of Hypnotism with his Sukiyomi and an Eye of Insight with his Amaterasu. Chisui had two Eyes of Hypnotism, both with Kodo Matsukame. The same could be said for Obito, having two Eyes with Kamui. Now, technically, these rules 
rules are loose. It's not to say that an Eye of Hypnotism can never do insight abilities or vice versa. It's just loosely implied by Madara that certain eyes are better at certain things. An Eye of Insight can do things like see Chakra, like a Byakugan, but not quite as well. However, even though it can't do it quite as well as a Byakugan, doesn't mean that it can't do it well. Because an Eye of Insight can track Chakra just like a Byakugan and even track Chakra through objects, though not as many as the Byakugan. And an Eye of Insight can actually even see if somebody's under Genjutsu, just like a Byakugan. On top of this, an Eye of Insight gives the user extra sensory perception, meaning that they can do things like mimic hand signs or read lips or even see on a cellular level. Yes, it is canon that Sasuke's Eye of Insight can see on a cellular level. Using these perception abilities, a fully formed Three Tome Sharingan can give a user basically future sight. Basically meaning that by reading the movements of their opponent, they can predict exactly where they're gonna move and dodge it. This perception ability also gives users of the Sharingan the ability to predict people's hand signs, copy them, and then shoot the same jutsu back at them. It's Kakashi's whole shtick. However, this doesn't only apply to Ninjutsu, it applies to Taijutsu and Genjutsu. Sasuke was able to watch Rock Lee's front lotus, copy it, and then modify it to make it his own lion combo. As for the Eye of Hypnotism, it's a bit more straightforward. Essentially, if you make eye contact with a Sharingan user, they can put you in a Genjutsu. Now, this Genjutsu can vary from anything from Tsukiyomi to Koto Matsukami to whatever Obito put Yagura in. Any user who awakens a Sharingan also has access to two of the most powerful abilities in the entire show. You see, this is a common misconception about the Sharingan. Sharingan. People believe that you need an MS to unlock Izanagi or Izanami, but you don't. 12-year-old Sasuke who had a one Tomei Sharingan could have used Izanagi though it wouldn't have been very useful in his hands. In order to explain that statement, let me quickly explain Izanagi and Izanami. Essentially, any user who awakens a Sharingan has the ability to blind their eye as a sacrifice to access some of the most powerful jutsus in the entire show. Izanagi, for the cost of blinding an eye, allows the user of said Sharingan to essentially control the universe. Izanagi gives one the ability to use creation of all things, a yin-yang release where somebody is able to rewrite reality. Well, Izanagi is most commonly used to stop somebody from dying. Like, let's say I've been impaled with a sword. If I have Izanagi active, I can actually make the body that was just stabbed again jutsu and create a different body of me transport my consciousness to that body and then bing bang boom, we don't even have to worry about that old body. That is to say, for a variable amount of time, depending on who's activated Izanagi, you are the god of the universe. Your imagination can be reality. As long as you have enough Sharingans and Chakra, you can just create a new body for yourself if the one that you are using gets stabbed, shot, or mutilated. Now, this is technically the only way we've ever seen Izanagi used, though it is heavily implied that while they were describing Izanami and Izanagi's backstory, that Ichiha members used to use Izanagi to control events outside of their own body, meaning that for the minute or so that you have Izanagi active, you could just blink people out of existence, rewrite entire town's histories, basically anything you want. But because the Sharingan is so precious to the Uchiha and so many people were blinding it in order to use Izanagi, Izanami was created. Izanami is again Jutsu. And for the sake of not getting into a very complicated thing I've already covered in its own dedicated video right here, we're just gonna keep it at Genjutsu. But essentially, a Sharingan user can blind one of their Sharingan to put somebody in an endless loop Genjutsu. And the only way to ever break out of this Genjutsu is to accept that you cannot change the events of history. You know, because that's what Izanagi is, changing the events of history. And any user of the Sharingan has access to either of these abilities. And either of these abilities would have been very useful against the next person we're going to talk about, Ishiki, and his dojutsu. Now, Ishiki's dojutsu doesn't have a name. It's just that, Ishiki's dojutsu. That doesn't mean it's not scary powerful. You see, Ishiki, for those of you who haven't watched Boruto, is the strongest Otsutsuki member we've seen thus far. Unless you count that panel we got to see of the Otsutsuki god. You see, this dojutsu allows Ishiki to use the ability Sukuna Hikona. Sukuna Hikona allows Ishiki to control his own size or any inanimate object. Essentially, this means that Ishiki at will can shrink himself or grow himself down to cellular level or do that with any inanimate object. And the way that he uses this in both the anime and the manga is by shrinking little metal rods and throwing these at his enemies. And once they're in his enemies, he throws them back to their original sizes. This leaves massive gaping holes in them because now you're impaled with a rod. This also makes Ishiki borderline impossible to fight because you can't fight somebody who's the size of a microbe. And since most ninjutsus are physical things, he can shrink those things with this ability to make them obsolete. This dojutsu also gives him the ability Daikokuten, which essentially allows him to 
to place anything he shrunk into a different dimension where time doesn't flow. That is to say, imagine he shrunk one of these statues behind me. He could, upon shrinking it, place it in a different dimension and then grab it whenever he wanted, throw it at you, and grow it back to its original size. So he has a limitless dimension he can access at any point where he can store whatever he's ever shrunk, giving him basically a limitless amount of items to throw at his enemies. On top of this, the Dojutsu also allows him to summon massive black heavy cubes that can disrupt sensor type ninja's ability to well sense this dojutsu also gives him the ability to see a human's life force and because he can see a human's life force he can estimate how much longer they have to live obviously this dojutsu isn't the only thing that made ishiki very powerful but the fact that ishiki used this dojutsu so effectively to basically mop both sasuke and naruto means that it's pretty high up on the list here. But since we're talking about Boruto exclusive dojutsus, the next entry on our list is also a Boruto exclusive, the Senrigan. We don't know a huge amount about the Senrigan currently, it is only in Boruto's manga, the anime hasn't made it to the Senrigan yet, but it's a dojutsu possessed by a woman called Ada, and it's absolutely terrifying. You see, the Senrigan allows Ada to project her consciousness anywhere in her own dimension instantly. She could project her consciousness to be here instantaneously and watch me make this video. And I know what you're saying you're saying well nick that's kind of cool the ability to be anywhere when you want to be consciously is nice and all but stronger than the sharingan stronger than ishiki's dojutsu you haven't even heard all of it yet ada can not only project her consciousness to any present moment in her dimension she can also project her consciousness to any past moment in her dimension that is she can send her consciousness into the past until the moment of her birth but to put that into perspective that means that hypothetically if i had a senrigan i could see any event of the last 26 years. I could project my consciousness to the White House to watch presidents talk about whether or not aliens are real. You could project your consciousness to a bank manager telling their new employee the vault code, enter it the next day, and bing, bang, boom, see you later. It is ultimate clairvoyance for all of the years you've been alive, that is. Meaning that during your lifetime, there is hypothetically nothing you couldn't know. There is some drawbacks to the center gone if a conversation happens in a different dimension mention or in a mental space like how the Yamanakas communicate telepathically she can't tap into that but if you had a communication out loud in the last 26 years she can hear it well we actually don't know how old she is so it could be like five years and she could just look old we don't we don't know but enough about Boruto let's get back to Naruto the next entry on our list is the Mungiko Sharingan this is the evolution of the Sharingan only ever awoken by a handful of Uchiha members and unlike the Sharingan itself this unfortunately does have to be awoken through trauma you see just like with the Sharingan there was some misconceptions about how to awaken the MS. See, the Uchiha for thousands of years knew that in order to awaken your MS, you would have to see somebody you were very close to die. However, because Black Setsu changed the stone tablet for thousands of years, the Uchiha thought you had to be the one responsible in killing your closest friend. And because of this, people like Shisui made sure that Itachi killed him and Madara and Izuna killed a close friend of theirs to awaken their MS. But you really just have to see it. We know that because Obito awoke his MS without actually having to kill Rin. Now, upon awakening an MS, you keep all the abilities of a standard Sharingan. However, you awaken two new abilities in each individual eye. Now, these abilities can be exactly the same, like how Shisui got Kodoa Matsukame in both eyes or how Obito got Kamui in both eyes. However, these abilities can also be separate, like how Sasuke awoke to Amaterasu and Kagatsuchi and Itachi awoke to Amaterasu and Tsukiyomi. But these aren't just lightweight abilities. The abilities awoken with an MS are some of the most powerful abilities in the entirety of the show. Amaterasu is a black flame that burns you until you die or the person who lit you with it releases it. Tsukiyomi puts you in a 72-hour genjutsu that actually only lasts three seconds. Kodo Matsukame can quite literally rewrite somebody's entire personality without them knowing and you don't even have to make eye contact with them. And Kamui allows you to quite literally transport yourself or something else to a different dimension. These aren't even the entirety of the abilities given to somebody with an MS. Upon awakening MS in two eyes, you are also granted the ability to summon a Susano. The Susano, also known as the perfect defensive jutsu, where a dual MS user assuming they perfected Susano is able to create a massive chakra samurai that is basically indestructible and can swing swords so large it slices his mountains in half. Not to mention things like Indra's arrow or the Totsuka blade or the Yada mirror. However, unfortunately, the use of Susano or MS abilities makes the user's eyes bleed and slowly but surely kills them and makes them go 
blind. However, all of these repercussions can be avoided if you take the MS of a close family member. And then either by taking your own eyes out or squishing that family member's eyes onto your eyes, you get eternal Monkey Kill Sharingan. I say by taking your own out or squishing them together because we quite literally don't know how you acquire EMS, like the procedure of it. Though we assume they merge because the MS techniques of the original user and then the person they took the eyes from do merge. And getting EMS gives you the ability to use all of the things I just listed, but with no repercussions. But you know what's cooler than EMS? The third evolution of the Sharingan, the Rinnegan. Now to call the Rinnegan an evolution of the Sharingan is a bit of a stretch. Though that is technically exactly what it is according to data books and the manga and all of that, it's not really an evolution. At least not in my eyes. Because there's a way for most Uchihas to obtain an MS from a Sharingan. However, the only way to obtain a Rinnegan is to essentially become a Hagoroma. You see, one obtains a Rinnegan when they combine the chakras of Indra and Ashura, Hagoromo's two kids. But the only people who would ever be able to do that are reincarnations of Indra and Ashura, aka Madara, Hashirama, Naruto, and Sasuke. And the Rinnegan is only accessible from the lineage of Hagoromo because he's technically the only canon person from the Otsutsuki clan that we've seen with a Rinnegan. Once again, I hear you screaming, Nick Orushiki has Rinnegan. Not canon. See, Hagoromo, like a lot of the other Otsutsukis, had a Rinne Sharingan in his forehead, but his standard eyes were Rinnegan. So the story of the Rinnegan being an upgrade from the Sharingan is based off the story that Hagoromo had the Sharingan and then his eyes ascended to a Rinnegan, which is based off filler information that Hagoromo ever had a Sharingan in the first place. But enough about all that, let's talk about the Rinnegan's abilities. Wait, nope. I'm dumb. Literally every Otsutsuki has Rinnegans in their hands. And Momoshiki didn't have a Rinne Sharingan, he had a regular Rinnegan. Well, now that we've got the fact that I'm dumb out of the way, let's get to talking about the Rinnegan's abilities. Well, the Rinnegan technically has different abilities depending on who it's in. Like when Madara has his Rinnegan, he has the ability of Limbo Clones, which are essentially invisible clones that Madara can create up to four of. You're not able to see these clones unless you have a Rinnegan yourself, or you can sense them using Sage of Six Paths Chakra. And Sasuke has his Heavenly Hand Power ability that allows him to change places with things of similar size to him. Essentially, he can teleport. But every single user of the Rinnegan has six basic abilities. And those six basic abilities are referred to as the six paths. One of those paths is called the Deva Path that allows you to control repulsive and attractive forces. Think Almighty Push, Almighty Pull. The Asura Path allows one to mechanically alter their body. You can make your arm into a rocket launcher to shoot rockets at your enemies, or you can grow yourself a giant metal serrated tail. The Human Path allows you to pull people's souls out of their bodies. The Animal Path allows you to summon multiple massive summonings. The Preda Path allows you to absorb chakra from your enemies. And the Naraka Path allows you to summon the King of Hell. See, the King of Hell is a very interesting ability. You can either walk into the King of Hell's mouth yourself and it'll heal you completely, or you can use the Human Path's ability to throw souls to the King of Hell. The King of Hell is an interrogator's best friend. Any soul grabbed by the King of Hell will have to answer truthfully to any question it's asked. If you lie to the King of Hell, your soul is ripped ripped out of your body and you are dragged into the king of hell, which means that you will never ascend to the pure lands. But even if you answer truthfully, you keep your soul, but you can be crippled for the rest of your life by the process. On top of this, the Rinnegan gives the user the ability to summon the demonic statue of the outer path, which is the 10 tails husk that's sealed on the moon. And then obviously there's additional abilities that are unique to people like Sasuke, like his ability to open portals. But the ability to open portals is most likely due to the fact that his Rinnegan is technically a six Tomei Rinnegan and not just like a base Rinnegan like Hagoro Momos, Nagatos, or Madras. But speaking of upgrading eyes, the next entry we have on the list is an upgraded Byakugan. Though technically, one no Hyuga member will ever be able to achieve. That's right, next on the list, and our second most powerful dojutsu is the Tenseigan. Now, the Tenseigan first appeared in Naruto the Last, Naruto's only canon movie. And a Tenseigan can only ever be awoken if an Otsutsuki transplants themselves with the Byakugan of a Hyuga clan member. And essentially, just like how an EMS is created, the fusing of these two chakra clan lines creates a Tenseigan. We see the Tenseigan awaken when Toneri implants Hanabi Hyuga's Byakugan into his eyes. And here's the thing, there's a reason the Tenseigan is the second strongest dojutsu on this list. First off, let's talk about what Toneri's plans were with the power of the Tenseigan. With the power of the Tenseigan, Toneri planned on throwing the moon into the earth and eradicating the human population. But that's not where his plan ended. He then wanted to use the power of the Tenseigan, which literally translates in English to reincarnation, 
AI to bring the entire planet back to life, but under his control. However, before he can do this, obviously he comes into combat with Naruto. But Tonera uses the power of the Tensei Gon to create a stone golem the size of full chakra cloak Karama. He then also uses the Tensei Gon to enter a Tensei Gon chakra mode, which grants him the ability to fly and use truth seeker orbs. See, access to truth seeker orbs are truly the reason that this dojutsu was second on the list. Truth seeker orbs are a keke mora, which means of the combination of all five basic chakra natures and yin and yang. And because of the combination of every single chakra nature, that means that no ninjutsu of any of the five basic nature types is going to be able to destroy a truth seeker ball. The only real exception to this rule possibly is one of Sasuke's arrow, which appeared to pierce one of Naruto's truth seeker orbs, but we don't know if Naruto simply used a truth seeker orb to deflect the arrow or not. Regardless, truth seeker orbs are probably one of the strongest weapons in the entirety of Naruto. Therefore, Dojutsu giving you access to those, it's gonna be top of the list. Or at least close to it because the true top of our list is the Rini Sharingan. See, the Rini Sharingan is the ultimate form of Dojutsu as we understand it currently. It's a Rinnegan with nine Tomei, three more than Sasuke's. And as far as we understand it currently, it's specific to the Otsutsuki. Well, sort of. You see, the first person we ever saw awake into the Rini Sharingan was Kaguya. She awoke to it after she ate the fruit of the God Tree. And this is where it gets a bit woogity. You see, because the Rini Sharingan is also possessed by the Ten Tails. The Rini Sharingan is possessed by the Ten Tails because the Ten Tails was originally created by Kaguya merging with the God Tree. Meaning that the Ten Tails got the Rini Sharingan from Kaguya. Which is why when Madara became the perfect Ten Tails Jinchuriki, he awoke to the Rini Sharingan. So in a sense, he was kind of just projecting Kaguya's Rini Sharingan that was projecting through the Ten Tails. I don't like it either. However, ironically, even though the Rini Sharingan is considered like the god of all dojutsus, we don't know a huge amount about it. Essentially, from a power standpoint, all we understand about the Rini Sharingan is that it can be used to cast Infinite Tsukiyomi and it allows Kaguya to shift through alternate dimensions. But those are two very powerful abilities, so let's get into them. Essentially, any user of the Rini Sharingan is able to reflect reflect their Rini Sharingan off the surface of the moon and cast the entire world into Infinite Tsukiyomi. Infinite Tsukiyomi obviously being an infinite Genjutsu that pulls everybody on Earth into it. And now obviously Infinite Tsukiyomi is used to distract people from the fact that the God Tree is slowly soaking away all their chakras so they can get turned into a chakra fruit. But obviously being able to put the entire planet under an infinite Genjutsu using the power of a Dojutsu is going to put you at the top of the list. And that's without even talking about the fact that Kagi can use the power of the Rini Sharingan to teleport between dimensions. Kind of like the Kamui, except unlike the Kamui, she can go to multiple dimensions, basically at any time she wants. Now, this is obviously an ability that Sasuke's six Tomei Rinnegan has, but Kaki is able to spam it. Now, that's because she's an Otsutsuki and has an Otsutsuki chakra pool, and Sasuke simply doesn't. But still, the ability to teleport between dimensions and put entire planets under an infinite Genjutsu is terrifying. And that's it! every single dojutsu except for the jogon you see i hesitate to even put the jogon on this list because the information that we have on the jogon currently let's just say is uh is jumbled the jogon for those of you who aren't watching or reading boruto is the dojutsu that boruto was pseudo born with and it's in a super weird place of canonicity essentially the jogon wasn't manga canon for a long amount of time but now it is manga canon. So basically, all of the times that we've seen the Jogon be used in the anime or anime canon, not manga canon. But now that Kishimoto has retaken control of the manga, he stated that the Jogon is canon and will be worked into the manga. And it technically, maybe, already has been. Because after Ishiki dies and he becomes a force ghost to go and visit Code, he tells Code about how every Otsutsuki is trying to rise to the height of existence of an Otsutsuki god. And in the image of the Otsutsuki god that we receive, it's basically just a celestial being covered in white eyes and that white eye looks a bit like a jogon so we're theorizing as a fandom that an otsutsuki god is simply just covered with jogon and that's why all otsutsukis are so afraid of the jogon that boruto has so if the strongest race of people's strongest person in an otsutsuki god is covered in this dojutsu you kind of have to assume more likely than not it's the strongest dojutsu out there. And at least what we've gotten from the anime and Boruto
Naruto has slightly pointed towards that fact. You see, in the Jogon alone, we've seen abilities that are unique to each of the three major dojutsu. We've seen the Jogon have the ability to track chakra, like a Byakugan or a Sharingan. And this allowed Boruto to see changes in somebody's chakra network and track them using their chakra. It can go so far as to actually see Tenketsu points like a Byakugan. It also allows Boruto to anticipate people's movements, like a Sharingan. And it can also see invisible barriers that connect dimensions, like a Rinnegan. So in one dojutsu, we've seen the abilities of the three major dojutsus, leading a lot of fans, one of which that looks just like me, to theorize that the Jogon is the base of all dojutsu. But for the moment, that's quite literally all we know. So will it be the most powerful dojutsu? Will it outperform the Rini Sharagon in terms of power down the line? Maybe, but for the moment, we're tentative. And now, that is it all of the dojutsu in the entirety of both Naruto and Boruto. What did you guys think? Is there any dojutsu I missed? Do you think the list is incorrect? Do you love me? Tell me in the comments below. And while you guys are down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Listen, I'm not saying that we need a Boruto Kai or a Boruto Brotherhood, but imagine if Boruto was just the 62 manga canon episodes that exist right now. It would be so hyped up.